Hi, everyone. Welcome back to a behind the business episode. These are really fun. I feel like I get to sit down and have a one on one conversation with you and share what's going on behind the scenes as I am building this business. So, this is really a peek into my founder's journey and everything that comes along with that, everything I'm experiencing in real time. And for this particular behind the business episode, I actually let you guys pick what we talked about today. So I gave you three options on Instagram and more than 80% of you voted for this topic. You all wanted to know what content I'm currently consuming, what I'm reading, what I'm listening to, what I'm enjoying and why, and you know the, the reasons behind the different selections that I've made today, which I think will be interesting because I've actually changed the type of content that I've been consuming pretty drastically over the last year. So I look forward to sharing some of my favorites with you today. And real quick, before we get into that, I just wanted to point out, if you're watching this on YouTube right now, this is the debut of my new home office backdrop in this video. So if you look behind me, it's the brand new wall that my fiance, Dustin, um, helped me bring to life. And I am so excited. This is going to be the branded backdrop for any in-person podcast interviews that we do, which I'm hoping to uh, make happen in 2023. And then, of course, you see it here in my video as well. So if you're watching this on YouTube, comment below. Let me know what you think of the new backdrop. I'd love to hear your feedback. And let's get right into my list of current favorites. All right, so I've divided the content I'm currently consuming into four different categories, podcasts, content on social, newsletters, and books. And we're going to start with podcasts since you're listening to a podcast right now. I thought that only made sense. I want to preface this by saying that in every season of your business, I think different content is going to resonate with you and be more beneficial to you than in others. And it's okay to outgrow content, right? There may be really awesome content that served you uh, for a particular purpose, for a particular time in your business building journey. And then maybe you outgrow it, you evolve past it, or your needs are just different. Your interests may change. So I think that just because you've always listened to something doesn't mean that you have to continue listening and so on and so forth. And you'll kind of see that here in my selections today. I also, of course, realize that as I say this, you know, you're listening to Cubicle to CEO. And, and my hope is that we continue to deliver such high quality content and value to you every single week that you never want to leave us because we love having you here as part of our podcast community. But in the same breath, sharing that, you know, if if you ever did outgrow us, we would understand and and we would hope that for the time that you're with us that you really feel like you got so much value from what we had to share with you each week. So, that all being said, the podcast that I used to listen to, I would say prior to this summer, were really very much entrenched in the industry that I'm in. So, or that I have been in in the last few years. So a lot of online marketers, I would say, um, you know, the 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 big shows that everybody listens to, Amy Porterfield's show. Um, I know early in my entrepreneurial career, I listened to uh, Jenna Kutcher's Gold Digger quite a bit. Not so much, I would say, in the last two years. Um, but certainly, you know, shows like Amy's and in similar shows to that, that's the type of podcast content that I was listening to. In more recent months, I have felt a, a big shift away from that type of content, not because I think that their content isn't good, but again, it goes back to in this particular season of my business, because we made our own internal shift as a business in wanting to build a media brand, I feel like I am a sponge right now trying to soak up as much knowledge as I can about what a media company looks like, runs like, learning the the new terms specific to this industry, learning the jargon, learning the best practices, um, all of these things that I am just completely green to, I needed to give myself a crash course in media and all things media. And so that has really you know, obviously impacted or influenced the the choices that I've made in terms of what kind of content I'm listening into. So some of my recent favorite podcasts, uh, 
I, I discovered a podcast called Podcast Advertising Playbook um, by Heather Osgood. That one I really love because it is very granular. So it's like very specific to podcast advertising and she covers all aspects of podcast advertising, both from brands wanting to advertise on shows and then of course podcasts and podcast hosts who are wanting to attract brand sponsorships. And I've learned so much from listening into her show. They're very short to the point conversations. Um, she shares a lot around numbers and that data centric viewpoint I think is very helpful to someone like me who tends to gravitate towards that anyways. As you can tell by listening to our show, we really like it when people are transparent about their numbers and and really laying it all out on the table. So I have a healthy appreciation that Heather does that as well for us. Another industry-specific podcast that I'm really enjoying is Inventive Entrepreneurs. This is a show by Sarah Brush. And this show in particular is about hosting events, hosting events, planning events, marketing events, anything around live events, both virtual and in person, but more heavily leaning towards in person events. And I've learned a lot from listening into this show too. Sarah has an extensive background in corporate events, so very large scale events, as well as helping entrepreneurs and, and small businesses host their own successful events. And because live events is an arm of our business that we started trying out this year and are really wanting to continue to expand in 2023, I want to learn as much as I can about event sponsorships, about uh, attendee engagement before, during, and after events around um, what we should be planning for and budgeting into um, our plans for hosting live events of different scales. So that has been a very helpful, very education-driven podcast as well. And her episodes are quite short, um, which is nice because they're they're the perfect like on the go for short commutes. Like if I'm driving across town or going to an appointment or whatever, like that's the perfect little slot that I can fit one of her episodes in. Another podcast show I'm absolutely loving is The Crazy Ones. And this one is a show under the Morning Brew brand, which is a media company that I admire very much, founded by Alex Lieberman. And Alex Lieber, this was actually Alex's podcast, The Founder's Journal, which I religiously listened to over this last year. Um, and then recently it was rebranded as The Crazy Ones. And now he has two co-hosts. So it's Alex and then Sophia Amoruso, who was the founder of Nasty Gal and Girl Boss. That's probably what you know her from. And then also his other co-host, Jesse Puji. So let me backtrack for a second and talk about the Founders Journal and what made me initially really enjoy listening to Alex's content. I feel like of all the uh, like more personal audio diary type of content that I've heard on podcasts, Alex Lieberman's content was the most tangible in terms of what he was sharing. Every single episode, I felt like I actually took away a new perspective or a tip or a framework that I could immediately apply to my business. And it was immensely helpful to hear him talk about every single type of topic that a founder would potentially run into. Everything from hiring to running team meetings to um company culture, to product development, to leadership mindset problems, to, I mean, literally everything under the sun that you could possibly encounter as a founder. I feel like he addressed it at some point and addressed it in such an honest way. Um, I really love how he brought us behind the curtain and, and really showed exactly what was happening um, in Morning Brew on a day-to-day -day basis. And what's impressive about the Founders Journal is it was a daily audio diary. So shorter episodes, I feel like that's kind of been a theme across a lot of the content I've been listening to lately. Um, not so much with the new show, the crazy ones, which the Founders Journal got rebranded into is actually more like a one-hour uh, typical podcast length, which I also really enjoy that long-form content. But previously, because it was a daily uh, daily podcast. It was definitely short, shorter in nature, um, but it was really cool just to kind of 
in a way, like observe his brain every single day. Um, and I learned a lot from that. And that whole archive is still available for, for you to listen to if you want to take a peek at that. But the new show that they rebranded into, The Crazy Ones, um, what attracted me to this show is that they cover a lot of different things in one episode. So it's not it's not just about you know one specific topic. They jump through a lot of different things, but it's in a very organized fashion. And I think a lot of credit goes to Alex for guiding the conversation with his co-host. He really keeps them on track. And and you know if there's only two minutes to talk about something, they talk about it for two minutes and they move on. So it's very um, I appreciate that because I I. I I love storytelling, but I don't love when people go off on these long tangents that don't have a lot to do with what you came to the episode for. So I feel like they really deliver and respect your time as the listener. So I appreciate that. But even though they do cover a wide variety of topics within a single episode, what I do love is that every single episode does kind of have a case study aspect to it, similar to our show. So if you like our show and you like the case studies that we bring to you every single week, our entire episode is focused on one case study and really breaking it down in detail so you can understand the strategy and the action steps behind each strategy or each case study, I should say, and and how it can apply to your business. But on their show, The Crazy Ones, they talk about companies and brands doing really interesting things and kind of give their take on it as as collective founders and collective entrepreneurs who have built really successful businesses. So for example, like um, I'm forgetting the name of the water brand now, but they were talking about how this brand that like literally sells water, <laughs> which is like, if you think about commodities in the world, Uh, what could be more of a commodity in a sense than water, right? There's not a whole lot you can do to differentiate when it comes to selling water. But this uh, particular brand, which now I feel a little embarrassed that I don't remember the name, but we're going to roll with it. Um, it, It's not really about the actual brand, but about how they were able to make an impression and how they were able to turn it into you know, a multi-million dollar, I think actually it was like valued at a hundred million, a hundred million or something like that. Something crazy, something like abnormal for uh, a, a water brand. But essentially most water brands are sports related drinks, right? Like, you know, think of energy drinks, Gatorade, whatever. They are typically wanting to be endorsed by, let's say, athletes, right? Athletes who might be using their product and then sharing with their audiences about it. Um, The case study that they kind of highlighted was how this particular water brand actually, instead of highlighting the professional athletes, they actually did a campaign with the water boys and girls. So like, you know, the people during professional like games that run water to the athletes or like are handing them, you know, cups of Gatorade or whatever. Like they took those people on staff and created a campaign around them. And I think they had them like race down a field, like maybe carrying water or or something, you know, entertaining like that. And it, it really made a big splash. And I loved that case study because it really kind of forced me to think about, okay, if you take something as common and every day as water, how do you make it interesting? How do you bring a human element to something that people engage with every single day that it's it's just like they don't think about it, right? Like we don't wake up typically thinking actively about water. It's just something that we need to exist as humans. So how do you make it interesting? How do you tell a story? How do you how do you bring personalities into it? How do you build a brand around it that differentiates you from all the other brands out there that sell water? So that is the type of content that you'll find on the crazy ones and that's why I personally really love their podcast. The last uh, podcast that I'll mention that I have been listening to is Back to the Beach. This is more of a nostalgic lifestyle type of podcast. If any of you grew up watching Laguna Beach or The Hills, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Back to the Beach is the podcast with Kristen Cavallari and Stephen Coletti, who were two of the stars on the original cast of Laguna Beach. And Lately, I've been noticing that these rewatch type of shows, like if you're an Office fan, right, The Office Ladies, or like with with this podcast, basically they go back, like original cast members will go back, rewatch the old episodes, and then comment on them and give kind of behind the scenes insight. And 
The reason I even brought this podcast into this conversation today is because I think it's a great example of how people really love any content where you provide your unique perspective on something, your hot take on a topic or conversation. So sometimes we feel like we need to create very unique content that has never been discussed before or has never been presented in any sort of way, when in reality, what people actually crave is your unique perspective on something. So you're not having to create something from scratch, but rather just add to the conversation. And so that's what I personally have been loving about Back to the Beach. It's really fun for me as you know, a, a longtime fan of the show and having grown up watching it to kind of go back and, and listen to their take on what it was like behind the camera, or I, I should say in front of the camera, right? And, and kind of reflecting back on their teenage years um, being filmed for this reality show in high school and, and some of the stories that we didn't get to see as the viewers or some of the context that was missing when we were watching as viewers. So I think that this is a great takeaway for all of you is that when you're creating content or maybe in a content rut, thinking about how can you add a fresh perspective to something that people are already talking about. All right. So those are the podcasts that I'm currently loving and listening to. Next, I wanted to touch on some of the social content creators that I've also been really enjoying. Uh, first is an account called Salary Transparent Street. They go viral often on TikTok and Instagram. So I'm sure you've seen it before, but it's essentially, I think the girl's name is Hannah. Don't, don't get mad if I got that wrong, but I think her name is Hannah. She goes around to different cities and essentially interviews strangers on the street and asks them, what do you do for a living and how much do you make? I love this content because if you've been a longtime listener of our show, you know that I am so passionate about making it normal to talk about money and increasing financial literacy for all of us, but especially for women, for it to be normalized for us to talk about money with our peers, with our friends, with our family, with society at large, because the more we know, the better we can advocate for ourselves and others and the more progress we all can make, right? So her her content is very inspiring to me because even though it's typically, at least in the content I've seen, they're not usually talking to entrepreneurs. It's usually people working in a more traditional job. Um, but it's so fascinating. It's so fascinating to see how how vastly salaries can range for similar types of roles in different parts of the country or, um, you know, with just even in a similar industry, how how different roles can just look vastly different from a monetary compensation. So I, I think this type of content uh, people crave because people crave transparency. So that has been um, just affirming in a way, I guess, uh, seeing how well that content performs, knowing that you know there are others out there who also believe in this mission of advocating for financial transparency. So I, I love to see it. I love to see it. All right, another creator that I'm absolutely obsessed with and so excited to actually have on our show is Cody Sanchez. Uh, unless you've been living under a rock, I feel like you've probably seen Cody's content at some point, whether it was recommended to you on YouTube, maybe you saw it on TikTok or Shorts, or you're subscribed to the newsletter. Um, Cody is such a prolific content creator. In fact, I would, I would say that <laughs> she is literally giving. Gary V a run for his money. I mean, granted, Gary has, you know, decades, he's been at this for decades, right? And he has a full-time multi multi-staff, uh, multi-staff, that's not a word. You know what I'm saying? He has a lot of people following him around and helping him create the the level of content output that he that he gives. But I'm so impressed. I mean, Cody, two years ago, I had never heard of her. And in the last 12 months, I feel like she's absolutely blown up and she is everywhere. And I really look forward to having her on the show. Um, just a little context around who she is. She is all about contrarian thinking. And that's actually the name of her newsletter, which highly recommend. And she creates content around building wealth 
and financial freedom through buying boring small businesses. When I say boring small businesses, I mean businesses that you typically don't think of as trendy or especially creative or exciting, but they're stable and necessary. They're more recession resistant and they are a part of our everyday lives. So businesses like, you know, HVAC companies and laundromats and car washes and just things that we use as everyday humans to get through life that may not ever see that insane spike in growth that a tech company would, but we'll see stable, continual growth for decades upon decades upon decades and produce reliable profits year after year after year. And, and be able to weather all sorts of different economic conditions. So really, really love the concept of buying boring small businesses. And you'll get to hear from Cody uh, in December on our podcast. So very much looking forward to giving you more insight on that and having her be able to share that with you. But just ahead of that, you know, start looking into her content now because it's it's amazing. Just the way that she is able to concisely convey information and tell stories. And what I really appreciate about Cody, similar to what I really appreciate about Salary Transparent Street and, uh, you know, what Alex does on the Crazy Ones and the Founders Journal is the level of detail and accessibility to data that Cody gives us. When she breaks down her small business acquisitions, the businesses that she's buying and that other people have bought, she really gives us all the the down and dirty details, right? It's like, this is what it costs. This is how we financed it. This is the profit margins. This is the operating expenses. This is, you know, any, any and everything that you would need to know around a specific acquisition and how that's performing in her business portfolio or wealth portfolio is all very clearly laid out and allows people to learn i think in such a such an engaging and easy to understand way it definitely makes me feel more confident in going out and buying a business i haven't yet but it's definitely something that's on my radar in 2023 so um, highly, highly recommend Cody's content. And that's Cody, C-O-D-I-E, by the way, Cody Sanchez. The last creator I've been really enjoying um, is a girl on TikTok. I apologize because I don't I don't know her name off the top of my head, but on TikTok, her handle is The Campaign Girl. And essentially, she shows the other side of influencer marketing. So she is a, um, I guess, like an influencer not an influencer. Um, <laughs> she is a brand person that helps manage the relationships between influencers and content creators and the brands that want to pay them for campaigns. So she's the one behind the scenes helping negotiate and broker those deals. And I guess in her own right, I take that back. She is an influencer in her own right, right? Because the content that she's creating is obviously influencing people, myself included. And so um, I really have been enjoying that content. It's all short form content and just kind of, you know, sharing kind of funny behind the scenes of like what it's really like to negotiate with these different creators and influencers, the issues that she comes up against, the um, the myths that she is trying to help people break through and better understand this industry because it is such a wild west and there's so much, it's, it's shrouded in so much you know, just mystery. So it's it's helpful just for someone to, again, transparently show what's actually happening. So I think that's kind of the theme here. The content that I'm really resonating with are from creators who can be transparent. And I really feel like that is hopefully the direction we're all going in. I, I really think that people really want authenticity, but they want it through transparency. I know that's been such a buzzword, uh, authenticity. But I think one of the best ways to be authentic is to be transparent. So um, highly recommend checking out some of her content on TikTok as well. All right, we are down to our last two categories. So newsletters. I already mentioned I really enjoy Cody Sanchez's newsletter. It's called Contrarian Thinking. Highly recommend you subscribe. Um, Probably one of the most value-packed uh, newsletters in, in, in every single newsletter covers a specific case study. So again, if you like the case study format that we have on our show, I think you're going to really enjoy her newsletter as well. 
And then also been really loving my friend Jacob Espinoza's uh, newsletter called Leader's Lens. This is actually a newsletter housed under the Workweek brand. And so Workweek, you know, is a media company that has a lot of different newsletters under their umbrella, all created by individual creators. And Jacob's Leader's Lens is really great for anyone in a leadership position, whether you are a leader in someone else's organization or whether you are leading your own team uh, through the business that you have built. It gives you really tangible advice and tips on how you can show up as a better leader, how you can better interact with your team and have hard conversations and support your team members and work through your own obstacles, which I think as leaders, it is it is on us to constantly, constantly be trying to improve, right? Because when we improve ourselves, we're able to better show up and support our team members. And so he sends out newsletters every Sunday and Wednesday, and they are just so packed with value. I mean, every single newsletter you're going to walk away from reading and and have something new that you can try to bring to the table to improve yourself as a leader. So highly recommend Leaders Lens. And all of these links, by the way, I'll make sure any of the you know social media accounts, any of the newsletters that we've mentioned, the podcasts, we're going to list all of these below for you in the show notes. So don't worry about scrambling to try to write these down. You can just head on below to the show notes and, and click through and find the ones that you are most interested in. Okay. The final category is books. This one's always the hardest because you know I've been listening to audiobooks a lot lately. Um, that's newer for me. I think I am more of a traditional, like I want to read a hardback or a hardcover book and, you know, hold it in my hands and flip the pages and smell the print, the fresh ink on the page. I'm very, very uh, traditional in that way. But lately I actually have been really enjoying audiobooks. Um, I got a subscription to Audible for a little bit um, and downloaded a few books there. And Two of the audiobooks that I really have been loving, um, one I already finished. It's called We Are Dreamers by Simu Liu, who if you are a Marvel fan, then he uh, you will know him because he played Shang-Chi. Um, he was the first Asian American to, to be in a super, a leading superhero role, which was very momentous for, you know, people like me. And and I was very, very excited to hear his book because he really dives deep into his, not only his own story, but his parents' backstory. You know, they immigrated from China to Canada when he was young. And so I could relate to a lot of the things that he experienced growing up and what that's like, you know, having a relationship with your parents when there is a cultural barrier, oftentimes a language barrier, and just kind of those dueling identities when you grow up in a in a foreign place, right? Because at your at your core, like for me growing up in America, I feel American, but I also am Chinese, right? And I have a very strong tie to my cultural background. And sometimes it can be hard to navigate the two when you're growing up. And so I found a lot of what he had to share in his book um, very relatable, very interesting. It is much, I would I would say it's it's very like memoir style. So if you like that kind of book with a lot of storytelling, then I think you will really enjoy his book. Um, something I really liked about his writing style is that sometimes, you know, when you read a book, it kind of feels like the person is holding you at bay a little bit. Like they're sharing a story, but they're not fully disclosing the emotions behind the story. They're not really giving you the details. It kind of feels a little bit uh, a little bit bland, for lack of a better word. And I feel like Simu did the complete opposite. Like he was so honest and so vulnerable almost to – I don't want to say almost to a fault because it's not like I feel like he overstepped the boundaries by any means, but it really made you feel like you were right there with him. And there were certain chapters in the book, especially when he's sharing his mom's story of how she was able to – just her whole backstory. I mean, I won't give it away. I highly recommend you listen to it or read it. Um, it. It really like brings you to tears at some points. And so that was just an absolute incredible story of 
of grit and resilience and dreams, big dreams, having big, wild, audacious dreams, like wanting to be the star of a major blockbuster super superhero film, which is something that, you know, for someone like Simu growing up probably felt impossible because there's there's no one that looks like him, right, in the industry to have set that precedent um, of being the lead superhero in a film in as big of a franchise as Marvel. And so getting to see him in the MCU, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and then also getting to hear the backstory of, of his childhood and early uh, 20s, early adulthood, um, and now leading into his current life and what it's like on the other side of, you know, quote unquote, making it, um, has, it, it was just truly such a, such a well-written book. And I could not recommend it more. Another audiobook that I have not finished listening to yet, but I am currently listening to is Born to Shine by Kendra Scott. And same thing, very, uh, very story-based, uh, business book. It, it, it is kind of, more of a business book, but it is still very memoir style, which is my favorite type of book, uh, nonfiction book to read. I think of all the books that I, I mean, I, I tend to gravitate towards business books, but I find that I am more drawn to business books that are told through a story lens or like a memoir style lens than business books that are very prescriptive. Like this is how you X, Y, Z, and very like worksheet kind of base. I I don't know. I just feel like I don't learn as well that way. I really learn more by hearing other people's real life experiences and what they actually did and then pulling elements out of that and saying, oh, I didn't even know you could approach a situation like this. Or, oh, that was really interesting how they problem solved their way through that or how they were able to you know, make that happen for themselves. I love that type of content. It's very inspiring to me. I think it's why I'm so driven to case studies because it's really like someone taking you along for the ride, right? And sharing with you all of the behind the scenes content that you normally wouldn't have access to. So I think that's why I love those memoir style business books so much. So highly recommend Born to Shine by Kendra Scott. She is the founder of Kendra Scott Jewelry, um, you know, a billion dollar jewelry brand that she she built from her house. <laughs> and and she's been a guest uh, shark on Shark Tank before, so you may have seen her there, but really, really love her book so far. And then my last book recommendation, something that I read this summer, actually, and I brought a visual with me because I actually have this book in person. If you're watching this on YouTube, it is Long Shot by Zach Grauman. And the title of the book says Long Shot, How Political Nobodies Took Andrew Yang National and the New Playbook That Let Us Build a Movement. So I was a big fan of Andrew Yang and his campaign back in 2019 um, when he was running for president. And even though Andrew didn't win, or, and no matter how you feel like from a po political side, right? Like how you how you lean as far as politics go, I think you're going to genuinely enjoy this book because this book is not about politics. This book is actually about, I think, marketing. It's it's about how you essentially take an idea that is completely obscure that no one's ever heard of. So something like a universal basic income, right? Where most Americans were like, what is that, right? And how do you bring a message into the masses? Like, to, how do you bring it to the masses where you get people to pay attention and care in some way to engage? And Zach does a really great job of sharing what exactly made that campaign work for them. How did a nobody, right? And all, I mean, a nobody in the sense of like from a public perspective, nobody knew who Andrew was. And and Zach even, you know, describes in excruciating detail like how awkward those early moments in the in the presidential campaign were because they nobody knew who they were, right? Nobody gave them the time of day. So starting from that place of obscurity, and then how do you 
build a movement, a grassroots movement that get people to get excited and want to evangelize your brand for you, want to spread your message for you, want to participate and support. And the way he breaks it down step by step, like this is a strategy we tried. This didn't work. This is a strategy we tried. This did work. Here's why. Here's how it applies to other types of work, to businesses, to building a personal brand, whatever it may be. If you have a story and a message that you want to get out there, this book is going to blow your mind in a lot of ways. And I don't say that lightly because I read a lot of business books. I read a lot of marketing books. And I got to be honest, a lot of marketing and business books are very... Uh, rinse and repeat, right? It's very much like the same thing, just said in different ways. I feel like Longshot was a was an exception to that. And granted, I don't think it was even meant to be branded as a business book, but from my perspective, it very much was competitive with other business books that I was reading, and in my opinion, was much more interesting and applicable. And especially one of my biggest takeaways from Longshot that I really enjoyed um, was Zach's breakdown of how when you're trying to build a movement around your brand, it's not it's not about who, who your brand is. It's about in engaging with your brand, what does that say about the person? People want to align with brands that that kind of clarify their identity in the world, right? It's like, oh, if I'm, and he gives some great examples, right? It's like, oh, if I'm a Mac user, what does that what does that say about me? Versus if I use PCs, something as simple and as seemingly, you know, arbitrary as a decision like that can say a lot about your personality and 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 how you see yourself in the world, how you fit into the world and what place you see yourself in the world. And he kind of talks about how to make your brand successful, it's less about who you are and and you know what makes your brand your brand versus how the people that engage with your brand how they perceive and interact with it as it relates to th- themselves. And so that was just a huge like perspective shift for me and I I really really enjoyed um his explanation of that. So that's just that's just one thing. I won't, you know, give you the whole synopsis, but I really really do think it's it's such an incredible book, no matter, again, no matter how you feel about their actual campaign, if you if you want to know how you can build a national movement with your brand, I think you'll take a lot away from this book and learn quite a bit. So that essentially wraps uh, this episode. These are the things that I'm currently reading, listening to, enjoying. I hope you liked this type of content. Um, I don't think I've ever done something like this before on the podcast. So if you did enjoy kind of getting to know me a little bit better in what kind of content I'm consuming and and why, please send me a DM on Instagram at Miss Ellen Yin, or you can send my team a DM at Cubicle to CEO and let us know what you enjoyed about this episode or what we could do to make it even more useful for you. Again, all the all the things I mentioned will be linked below in the show notes, so make sure you go check that out if you haven't yet. And if you do end up listening to one of these podcasts or reading one of these books or following one of the accounts that I mentioned, will you please let me know? And will you please send me a DM and give me your review of the content once you have had a chance to interact with it a little bit? I'd be very curious to hear your unique perspective and your take on it. All right, friends, that is all I have for you today. I will catch you in the next episode. Thanks for listening.